Bonjour, mes amis. Right here we have St. Blaise Chapel. A tiny little chapel that has been used until the 18th century by the Guild of Wool Combers and Weavers. Let me show you inside. Oh wow, it's super dark in here. Really dark in here, but... Wow. I assume there's so much sun here that you have to keep it pretty pretty dark and cool. So there's not much to see except this beautiful pet tapestry. Look at that. Wow. So we are right now in La Beau de Provence, which is uh, this beautiful town that is up on a hill. Well, actually not up on the mountains itself. So we're going to see marvelous views apparently. So let's continue going forth. See what views we can see from up here. I'll show you uh, the location on the map. So right here, Le Beau de Provence. Okay, I think we're gonna get to the top part right over here, the summit <laughs> of this mountain town. Now this town is barely a town, it's barely a village. Only 26 people apparently live here, which is so little. But more than 1 million people visit this town on a yearly basis. So Provence isn't really that heavily populated when you think about it. Except maybe for Marseille, which is the second largest city in France, which we're going to see from this point of view. And oh my god, I'm already getting hyped. Wow. Here's the town, the main town. But let's check out these views, shall we? Oh my god. Hello Kay, hello Susie, hello Colleen. Colleen, nice to see you here, Colleen. Roy, Mater, Nader as well, Raynette, nice to see you here. Hello Sylvia, Darlene. Connie is tuning in, great. I'm catching this live in the morning in the US. Yeah, welcome. Oh, wow. C'est magnifique. This is Provence. But where does the word Provence come from? The word Provence comes from what would be in English, but it comes from the ancient Roman Latin, Provencial. This was the, the province here of after the expansion of Caesar, taking down all those Celtic tribes, took over all these lands, integrated into the greater Roman Empire. So here we're also seeing a lot of olive trees. Olive trees have grown all around the Mediterranean since prehistoric times, but it was the Phoenicians who began cultivating olive trees back in Provence in 600 BC. So the Phoenicians were here before the Romans. At the end of the 18th century, the olive industry was in full flower, although a number of bitter, bitter frosts in 1789-1956 killed off over 80% of the trees. It was then that the grapevine, acclimatizing to the difficult, rocky soil, was introduced partly supplanting the olive tree. Today, some 13 estates in La Beau Valley are planted with 340 hectares of vines. The olive trees were replanted, and today there's 290,000 olive trees. And of course, part of Prov Provence's cuisine is having olive oil in their gorgeous salads. Oh my. The Obo says wine and olive oil are the main economy. Yeah, it was the main economy. And there in the distance, Marseille. Right here, you see these cranes? That's the port, port of Marseille. It's like the largest city in France after Paris. And then Lyon is number three. Bill 
Google says, up here looks like flat earth. <laughs> Indeed, Bill. Maybe we can see the ice walls of Antarctica there in the distance, if it's a clear enough day. Oh my god. So Provence is the agricultural heartland of France. Some of the best fruits and vegetables and herbs are cultivated right before our eyes. Olive oil and wine are just to name two, but you have many others. Of course, the grape itself. You have tomatoes, oranges, apples, apricots, strawberries, cherries, sugar. Adam says, what tour are you on that you're exploring these areas? Uh, the name of the tour is Full Day Tour of Provence from Avignon. And that can be found in getyourguide.com. Susie asks, uh, cauliflower as well? Yeah, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but that's a good question. I saw sunflower. I saw fennel. I saw zucchini. Um... That's what I've seen so far. There's, of course, countless, countless vegetables. You can really make a gigantic list. Sylvia says, it reminds me of a French kiss. Is, are you referring to a film? Or are you referring to the actual act of French kissing? <laughs> Hello. Uh, have you sampled wine yet? Asks uh, Wendy. No, not yet. That's a good question. Lavender as well, Diaz. Yeah. Lavender is used in the Herbs de Provence uh, mixture. It's an herb mixture used in a lot of dishes. And lavender is one of the ingredients. That's Thank you for letting us know. Hello, Roy. Beatrice, Bill. Joseph, Julianne, nice to see you here. Julianne says, I like this live stream. Oh, I'm so glad you like this live stream. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Provence. Uh, take a better selfie here. <laughs> That's a thumbnail shot right there. Ooh, it's hot. Some wind, but still hot. 92 degrees Fahrenheit or so. Dia says I slammed it and just broke my button. <laughs> Thank you, Dias, for slamming it. I appreciate your fervor for the show. Jeffrey says it's Taco Tuesday. You know, uh, I don't think the French really celebrate Taco Tuesday, unlike in the great US of A. And thinking about it, varied landscape of France is truly breathtaking. We came from Chamonix, the French Alps. We saw snow, fresh snow in Chamonix, well, and, uh, up in the mountains. We came from Lyon, very dry, no wind in Lyon, pretty dry place. And now we're over here in a very hot, and even more drier place, but very windy. DSS the French news. Oh, thank you so much, Dias. Appreciate that. Susie says, Chamonix is just the memory now. Oh, yes. Let's see if we can get over there. I don't got too much time. I got until 3.50 to get back to my tour bus. Uh -oh. Don't walk in the grass. There's some prickly plants over here. The tourist says, I thought urbanist was all about urban hiking and food and churches. Now we're hiking in the mountains. Any changes, says the tombster? <laughs> 
Them too, sir. You take the moment to really take in how there is still an urban environment in front of us, despite it seem rather naturey. Though it's good to have always some change. You know, I myself as not just a clapping a lot. <laughs> Can't concentrate with the clapping. <laughs> so yeah, I call myself urbanist uh, because I generally like cities, but uh, as an artist, I myself need change. I can't stick to the same thing over and over again. I've been doing this for six years. Uh, so, and I will all, always envision a spin-off channel uh, called Naturist. Uh, which is all about exploring nature. I think I have not envisioned it me running it because I, I really don't care for too much for long hikes, but I would love to find someone to uh, it, do a spin off channel where they live stream long hikes and treks through nature. That would be so cool. So, yeah, I think it's awesome to have a little bit of variety in life and also in a show. Nobu says, I love those small villages. Yeah, Nobu, they are gorgeous. Nobu, you, Nobu is nearby. He's in, uh, you're in the Court d'Azur, right? Nobu, officially in the Riviera or you're officially in the Provence? Do let us know. Um, but you live in a beautiful area of France. France is about the same size as Texas. And look at the varied geography we have in France. It's just mesmerizing. Malachi says, would you ever visit South Africa? There's some countries in the world where it's tougher to visit uh, more calmly. Live streaming. To make a live stream fun, I have to be feeling rather relatively chill walking around. Unfortunately, there's some parts of the world like South Africa where one can't really feel chill just wandering. You will have to go to very specific sites in some of these countries. And that might be fun on its own, but it, it would be a different show. Because I, I wouldn't feel comfortable just like on a whim going somewhere in South Africa. And I've heard this directly from South Africans. And that applies to many other parts of the world, unfortunately. But maybe one day, we'd love to see... Uh, what is it called? Cape Town, I think it's the name. Really beautiful. Dia says, even in Egypt, hard to film. Yeah, yeah, I would love to do Egypt, but it would have, I would have to be very specific. I would have to specifically go to the pyramids. Probably Cairo, I would have to be with a guide of some sort. Nibu says, some parts of the world are difficult to live stream. Yeah, they are. It got stuck in my shoe. Greg says, will you be back in New York City in September? Greg, I'm not sure if I'll ever be back. Europe might be my new home now. <laughs> I my flight is is set to return in mid September, yeah. So I don't have time for the gardens. But fret not, those gardens probably are not much to look at because it's pretty dry up here. So let's go into the town. Join me as I go back into town.
and I gotta find shade before my camera overheats. Hey, Colleen says, I'm enjoying your stream so much. Colleen, I'm so happy you're enjoying my stream. Colleen, thank you again so much for your very generous PayPals. Uh, it's because of you and many other contributors that I'm able to show you these experiences vicariously, virtually. So big round of hearts to Colleen. She has been among the most generous of uh, contributors. So round of hearts to Colleen once again. I haven't been able to thank you every single time you given a uh, PayPal, but thank you, thank you so much, Colleen. So let's go into the town, see a little bit of the town. Only 26 people live here, somewhere around there. This was the chapel we started the video from. And here's an overview of the entire area. So we are here, right here. So we're gonna now venture in here see what's up and there's more stuff to see here ancient roman it seems to be maybe ancient roman not 100 percent sure but definitely medieval Ooh, a cemetery you have sunscreen on says adam i do i have to reapply soon but i do have sunscreen on Interesting how much quieter is here. SJ says this is going to be another interesting visit. Says SJ, I'm so glad. I'm only in Provence. This is a very short trip as I'm going to another region of France. Um, now I realize Provence is a lot more. So you might see a little bit more Provence tomorrow. A little bit later today, I probably will do one more live stream. Beautiful butterfly. Wow. Yeah, if you're if you're enjoying these Provence live streams, I'm already up to three live streams today. You might not get the notification for the next one, but stay tuned in about an hour or an hour and a half. I might do one more in a different location here in Provence. Uh, we might be visiting some ancient Roman ruins. And then tomorrow, stay tuned. Uh, probably around 1 to 2 p.m. No, a little bit later, probably around 3 p.m. I'll be going live uh, to show you one more place in Provence. And then I'm off to another area of France. Dia says uh, France is a pretty big country to get around it is i mean <laughs> it's gonna take me a while to get to the next location and as I, uh, this is the location for a wine and i mentioned earlier the location that you can't tell the pope you'll see you'll see that soon um but the next location you gotta bring your short shorts Lavender. Wow. 
Brent is asking, is this area Roman? So Brett, we are in uh, areas where the Romans were indeed here. Uh, this was an important crossroads between Rome and Northern Spain, which was another holding of ancient Rome. Um, and there were indeed, a, there was a city nearby called Gallum, which I'm going to post a short video of soon. But uh, I'm not entirely sure if this specific area is Roman. I don't think so. It'll be a bit too high in elevation, I think, for the Romans. This might have been medieval. But if anyone can find out, do let us know. Ooh, hats. I need a good hat. I don't think... I like my cap, but I don't think it fits for the region I'm in. Ooh, postcards. Albany says, this is so cool. I'm so glad you're enjoying it. Dia says to me, uh, Provence is the Tuscany of France. It is. Oh, yes. This is definitely Tuscany vibes. Just people are speaking French. Oh, soap. A soap store. Oh, so cool. Oh, I can't wait to buy soap. Yeah. This is awesome. The best kind of store is soap store. They usually have soaps that are made with local herbs. Uh, I love the ones that are made with mint or peppermint. Oh, best soaps ever. Sandy Pandy says, what a lovely town, yeah. Ooh, very cool magnets. Look at this. Susie says, I've never seen anyone so excited for soap. Oh, Susie, you don't know. <laughs> There's a few uh, stores in, in New York City where they sell very natural soaps. I would encourage you to buy one. Try it out. Take it for a spin. It will change your life. Oh, Brett, thank you so much. Brett has given a 20 pound super chat. He says, uh, thank you for explaining that. Uh, have a treat on me. Thank you so much, Brett. I think I will a little bit later. May I buy a soap with that. <laughs> thank you so much, Brett. I appreciate you. Ooh, cheese. Bonjour. Bonjour. Can I try one of these? Sweet yeah. melon, orange, almond. Oh. oh, wow. Artisanal. It's a cake? Calisson. Calisson, okay. Sweet, ouais. mm. Gourmandise. It's une gourmandise. Gourmandise. Wow. Mm. Very good. It's bon. Hein? C'est bon. Mm. Après la pistache, mm. almond, li, uh, limon, ginger. Ah. Ginger. Mm. Ginger, lavender, ginger, basilic. Can I try the ginger? A little bit? Hmm? Can I try a little bit? Ginger? Yeah. Yeah. C'est possible? Ginger. Vous parlez français? No. Oh. No. Comme si, comme ça. Petit peu. Yeah, petit, yeah. Ouais, ginger, c'est là. Mm. C'est celui-ci. Oh. Bon, hein? Yeah, bien. strong. Oh, oui, hein. Yeah. Oh, wow, very strong. Mm. Mm. Can I buy a little of this to Some buy? Punch? What? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. See, si, wait. Oui. <laughs> <laughs> si, yes, wait. Oui. <laughs> voilà. Sans 
ancienne crâne. Presse 18, s'il vous plaît. Après, j'ai 4, si vous voulez. Oui. 4, 4 Oui. Merci. Allez-y. All right, got myself a little treat. It was really good. So very soft, kind of caramel-like cake. It tastes almost like havla. So it tastes almost like a like a Israeli havla. A few other Middle Eastern countries do the same thing. Uh, the the ginger one was very. It's very strong ginger. I still it's burning my tongue. But the classic one is really good. It's really good. So. It was thirteen dollars though. Expensive. <laughs> we are in a touristy town though. This would probably be cheaper in the big city. <laughs> Wendy says we thought you were trying soap. It looked like soap, but no, no, fret not. It wasn't enough soap. Zaza says bonjour. Expensive slice of cheese says K. Okay. No, this was not cheese. It was like um, not sure even how to describe it. Uh, best way I can describe it is Israeli havla. So it's not cheese. It's um like a candy cake. If anyone knows how to describe it, do let me know. Adam says, do you mean 13 euro? Yeah, you know, so the euro and the dollar are about parity. So parity means uh, they're about the same now. So yeah, you can now use them interchangeably, basically. John says this place looks so old. Are there dinosaurs? <laughs> no, uh, John, it's not that old. You gotta add a few million years. Wow. Some beautiful little side streets here. All right, we're reaching the end of the town. Uh, if you want to see more bonus videos of uh, Chamonix, there's three 360 videos coming up in the next few weeks uh one is already up of the cable car ride in full blazing sun uh so if you want to see that go patreon.com slash urbanist and here we're reaching the end of the town it's a nice place we only had about 50 minutes here but i assume you can easily spend here about two or three hours it is very beautiful it may relax even more So he said, you finished your tour? No, we have one more full stop left. So this is the second to last stop on this full day tour. I think.
Dia says, it looks like you enjoyed this trip uh, of France more than last time. Yeah, yeah, it kind of struggled uh, in Paris 2019 in August. Uh, Paris is a bit dead in middle of August and it kind of sucks because the first time I went there, I was hoping to eat the croissants and eat the bread and go to the braceries and everything was closed. Everything is better places were closed. So it kind of sucked, but um, this time around, I went to Paris luckily in June and enjoyed it much more. Lyon was a bit quiet though, uh, but I'm enjoying it because of uh, going to more novel places, I think is worth it in France. So you're gonna see a lot of these stores selling cookies all around Provence. And yeah, down, I gotta go down that way, cool. Mika says, have you seen, seen the Pont du Gard? Mika, put on your notifications. I will nev neither confirm nor deny about Pont du Gard. MK says, you sold me on the French Alps. My pleasure. All right, I'm gonna see if I have a little bit of time. I'm not sure if it's already too late and my bus has left. Uh, if I have a little bit of time, I'm going to find a French hat to wear. Everyone, thank you so much for tuning in from Le Bou de Provence. Here, beautiful views. Highly recommend coming here if you're taking a car trip around or going on a day trip from Avignon. Do recommend it. Thank you so much for everyone for tuning in. Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Au revoir, mes amis. A bientôt.